Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to look at another watch from Detroit Mint. This is a micro brand that I've always has a special place in my heart. I know the owner quite well and I just think a lot of the designs that they do quite fun, quite playful and they're usually inspired from films or vintage watches that I personally quite like as well. This watch that we're looking at today is the Detroit Mint Speedy. My last review for this brand covered the Cobra watch, a watch based on Dave the owner's love for the Ford versus Ferrari film. Prior to that if you remember I reviewed the Mac watch which was a watch inspired by that classic citizen bullhead chronograph that brad pitt wore in another fantastic film once upon a time in hollywood the brush gold version that dave did of this was just awesome i think he really captured the spirit of that vintage citizen made it a quartz watch refined the design added that bun strap to it he did a great job overall one of my favorite watches that i think he's ever produced this time dave is taking on another icon vintage seiko chronographs from the 1960s and 70s and the main inspiration for this model although it does take cues from other vintage Seiko watches, but the main inspiration for this watch is a very famous Seiko that actually went into space. If you're a big Seiko fan like I am, you'll know this watch was called the Pogue, named after Colonel William R. Pogue, who wore a Seiko during a NASA Skylabs mission in 1973. The Detroit Mint Speedy, as it's called, is a tribute to those vintage mechanical speed timers of the early 70s, Seiko themselves did release a tribute to the speed timer and as you'll know I've got one in my collection and I absolutely love it but it's fair to say it doesn't aesthetically bear that much of a resemblance to its ancestors. If you're interested in seeing a full review of that watch I'll leave it in the description down below. Dave's gone to great lengths to capture the spirit of those very famous speed timers and thanks to Todd who you'll know from my live streams as the vintage Seiko expert has kindly lent me in an original speed timer in fantastic fantastic condition so we can compare and contrast the two models together. There are a number of visual cues between the two but I think the Speedy is a very different watch and we'll talk about that as we go through the review. I always love chatting to micro brand owners to find out the inspiration for their designs and in chatting to Dave I found out that he had a real love for those original speed timers in particular the 6139 Pogue. Because he's a passionate collector as well as an owner of a micro brand and he participates in a lot of online forums and he was finding that people were asking whether there had ever been a homage to the speed timer or Seiko had ever reproduced it. And of course, I think the closest they've got is the speed timer that I've got. And based on the knowledge that he had from creating the other watches in his collection, he really set his sights to taking inspiration from these vintage chronographs and trying to improve the models. And these are improved over those original speed timers. Has sapphire crystal. This time it's using a mecha quartz movement instead of the mechanical chronograph movement, which means that the watch is very affordable. And he also added a screw down crown to give it 100 meter water resistance, which the originals didn't have. So overall, the watch took about a year to from design to complete completion and during that time he got a lot of feedback from the Seiko collecting community and he fed that back into the overall design of the watch so this watch that we're looking at now is the last of the prototypes so there's still a little bit of refinement around the bracelet which to be honest I think it needs but this is as close to the production model as we're going to see the speedy as it's called and to be honest that name is still not sitting with me right because the speedy is commonly used in a association with the Omega Speedmaster but I imagine that if David straight up called it a speed timer then he would have probably got into some legal trouble with Seiko so I guess the speedy is what the name of the watch will be. The speedy uses a mecha quartz movement to capture the feel of vintage chronographs as mecha quartz has that sweeping second hand. It also has the all the advantages with having a battery powered quartz movement in there. It's accurate, reliable, don't have to regularly service the watch it also allows the price to be kept at a very reasonable 220 dollars this version is the blue dial version it's also available in silver black and most historically iconic i think is the gold dial version i really like how dave plays with 
gold with a lot of his other models that he produces as well like the mac that we talked about before where he used gold brushing for the case that i think really captured that design even more surprisingly than the the polished gold case which would be more film accurate to the once upon a time in hollywood movie so how is this watch gonna wear well let's look at those case stats we have a diameter of 40 millimeters a lug to lug of 45 a thickness of 14.5 millimeters, sapphire crystal with a slight blue AR coating. The watch features a screw down crown, but the pushers aren't screwed down. They're double sealed to enhance the water resistance. And this watch features a hundred meter water resistance, which is suitable for most activities you're gonna get up to. The stainless steel H-Link bracelet has a nice vintage feel to it, but is very well made, including the clasp, especially in this price range. The bracelet adjusts using a pin system and the clasp feels very high quality. The only issue on this version I have is that the end links are not fitting quite right this is one of the refinements that will be coming to the production version i confirmed with dave the overall case shape is very pleasing to the eye you can see those visual cues it's taking from that original speed timer however the case is thicker than the vintage version which is surprising and may seem weird because the original did have an automatic mechanical movement in it i think this is something to do with the mecha quartz movements because the speed timer that i have is of a similar thickness to this watch as well so i think you need that extra thickness to house the mecha quartz movement even though the watch is thicker than the vintage version it's in keeping with modern watches and it fits my 7.2 inch wrist really well I like the way the case is balanced and overall very pleasing to the eye. The case, as we can see, is completely brushed and that is in keeping with the vintage speed timer here as well, which was completely brushed, which lends itself to that tool watch aesthetic. Works very well for this case shape and design. The dial has a very slight sunburst that really does capture the light. For me, I think you have to go for either the blue or the gold version to lean all the way into the vintage vibe this watch is trying to capture. The handset is great. The minute hand goes all the way to the second track on the outer of the dial. However, this version does not feature the inner rotating bezel that was an icon of that original speed timer. When I asked Dave about this, it was to do with the complexities of recreating this mechanism and he also worried about the longevity of this mechanism working in one of these watches. It also would have taken a lot longer to produce this watch and also probably cost quite a bit. And to be honest, I don't think that it's missing that much by not having this inner rotating bezel. The minute track is on the rehole, very visible. And we also have that tachymeter on the outer bezel, which really allows precise chronograph measurement of time using that very distinctive red second hand i like the way that this red second hand also complements the red on the sub dials as well now you're not going to get seiko levels of loom on this watch but it is enough to get by the highlight for me is the dial layout some nice little details the framing around the date window the placement of the sub dials distinctive watch in its own right even if you're not familiar with those vintage seiko chronographs and i personally think that most collectors are more familiar with vintage seiko divers than they are perhaps with the chronograph versions because the chronograph versions originally were only made for a 10-year span before quartz took over the seiko range for the money i think it's a great looking watch and you're also supporting a small production us micro brand that is actually based in detroit this version is now being posted to its permanent home alongside this vintage seiko in todd's collection head on over to the detroit mint website if you want to find out more details and if you're new to the channel i would love it if you hit that subscribe button I appreciate you watching. I'll see you next time on Casual Watch Reviews.